All right, so have you ever been building solutions in Office 365? Maybe you're using Power Apps, Canvas Apps, Model Driven Apps, maybe a SharePoint list, Teams. You're using all of these tools, these parts and pieces, and you have processes that span all of them, and you haven't quite figured out how to put them together. Well, we're gonna to talk today about adaptive cards and how you can use those, particularly in Teams, to bring those people and processes together. So the simplest way to describe an adaptive card is that it's a card, you might say a form that displays data and allows you to solicit input from the user or engage with the user. And that card can be displayed in a variety of tools and platforms. So think of a scenario in Office 365 where you have maybe Teams and Canvas apps and model-driven apps and all of these different ways that you're engaging with your users. Adaptive cards can be used as a common way to display the same data and engage with users across all of those tools. So a very recent example of an adaptive card use that I'm working with is a scenario where we have a Power App, a Canvas app that's actually delivered on a mobile device where a user's going to need to submit something um, and that something that they're doing requires relatively immediate action from someone on the back end or on the back office side of things. So in that particular scenario, the user on their mobile device is basically uh, submitting a request and we're picking up that request with a flow, let's say, and then we're creating an adaptive card in a Teams chat uh, for someone at the back office to actually do something with. So in that particular scenario, they've got their alerts turned on for Teams, they've got their Teams app on their phone uh, or on their desktop, and they're gonna get that alert when that adaptive card shows up, in which case they can actually take action and submit it, and it can immediately go back to the person in the field on their mobile device. Okay, last thing before we dig in, if you like these videos, be sure to subscribe. And as always, if you have a comment or question, post it below. First, we kind of want to walk through a working example. So I've got a user, let's say his name is Steve. He submitted an issue to my issue tracker list. Uh, so there's a new issue here. Um, and we have a flow set up basically to automatically like monitor this list and then create an adaptive card in Teams uh, based on stuff that shows up in this list. So we're going to jump over to my team um, and take a look at what's been created there. So right away, we were looking at an adaptive card in the general channel um, on my Skabooch Ops team. Uh, it says new issue reported and it gives me all of the information. So this is the information that came from that item in the list that Steve submitted. Um, and he's complaining that he can't find his files. So the next action that I wanna take is I actually want to assign this to someone so I can actually do that here. Um, and I'm giving myself an option to assign it to myself, Mitch, Josh, or Steve. In this case, I'm gonna assign it to myself and go ahead and click assign. So not only did we get information about the issue, um, but we can actually take action on that. Um, and once we've done that, it tells me, thank you for assigning the issue. So you can deliver a nice message to your end user. Um, and so that's been sent. And the next phase in this process is to actually have a conversation with Steve about what happened. So again, we're gonna use an adaptive card to do that. So basically what happens is we'll come over here and we'll take a look at Steve's team. Uh, and in this particular case, we can see that an issue has been assigned. So it's showing up in a chat with myself, with Mike. Um, and so it says that the issue has been assigned. It's got all of the information there. Um, it's got an option to choose a resolution and enter some notes. And so now Steve can have a conversation with Mike. He can say, hey, I noticed you are assigned my issue. Can you help? All right. And so Mike and Steve have a friendly little conversation. I'm helping Steve find his files. And ultimately, you know, we can have this conversation back and forth as, as long as we want. Now as Mike... I can see that the issue is resolved. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm actually gonna mark this completed, add some notes, and mark it as completed. And so now that this adaptive card has been completed, um, we can do other things with that data. We can actually, in this case, we're using the flow to update the issue in the issue tracker list, mark it completed, add the notes to it, for example. And then we're also having the conversation with Steve and he can actually see within his chat uh, in Teams as well that the issue's been completed. Um, so we'll just take a quick look over there and see indeed that it has actually been closed. All 
All right, so the key to doing adaptive cards or building adaptive cards and using them in Teams or any other platform for that matter is something called adaptivecards.io. So there's a website out there um, hosted by Microsoft, supported by Microsoft, it's called adaptivecards.io. And on that website, there's actually a designer tool that is super helpful and handy. Uh, if you're gonna be building adaptive cards, I highly recommend using that instead of trying to do it all yourself um, in, you know, by hand. So in the Adaptive Cards IO Designer interface, we've got a few different kind of panels or contexts to work from. We've got what the Adaptive Card actually looks like uh, right here kind of in the center. Um, we've got card elements uh, that can be added to the card uh, from our, this panel on the left. On the right, we've got our actual card structure as it is built. So uh, this is kind of showing a hierarchical structure of the form or the Adaptive Card itself. Um, and then if you select a given property or or control on the form. On the right, you've got the properties for that particular element. So you can, you know, specify the data that you want to be there, give it a name, those types of things. On the lower right, you've got a sample data editor. So this is a place where you can plug in JSON that can actually be used kind of dynamically uh, to build your adaptive card so that it actually looks like it has some real data in it in this designer environment. And then on the bottom, uh, you have this card payload editor. And this is basically the JSON that actually defines the card. And this is the piece that's critical uh, and that you're gonna use to plug the adaptive card into your actual flow. Okay, so now that we're a little bit familiar with all of the parts and pieces of the adaptive cards designer tool, uh, let's go ahead and look at the adaptive card that we have and talk about how we actually built that. All right, so the first thing that you'll wanna do if you're gonna be building uh, one of these adaptive cards for Teams is you'll want to flip your host app to one of the Teams options here. So um, this will we'll choose the Teams Lite uh, template, if you will. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and jump right into uh, what our particular adaptive card looks like. So let's just walk through uh, some of these elements. We've got first we've got a text block here at the top that's you know says issue assigned. We've made this kind of bold um, and a little bit more prominent than the other things. We've got issue assigned to, and you'll notice on each of these elements, you get this little option to bind it to something. So if you have some sample data, uh, in this case, uh, this still has the sample data from uh, the original card uh, when we fired up the designer. So we don't really want any of that, but you can bind that information here. So if we wanted to come in here and say, bind this to whoop, something meaningful, like, assign to, we could then come up here and actually bind this to assign to, right? And it's gonna take that over. So in this particular case, we want this to be a little bit more intelligent. Uh, so I'm gonna come down here into this particular um, part of the card. And instead of letting that just be bound directly to the assigned to, we're gonna replace that with issue assigned to like so, and then it actually makes some sense. So below that, we also have a basically a fact set. So a fact set is a handy place where you can enter like multiple columns of data if you have it. Um, so you have a label for the field and then the value for the field, um, and you can simply add items to that fact set. So you see here on the right-hand side, if we wanted to add a new fact, we can do that easily. Uh, below that, we have a text block uh, for our details uh, where we can actually uh, plug in the actual input that the user provided. So in this case, I can't find my files. Um, that's where that's gonna show up. And then we have a resolution, uh, which in this case is a choice set. Um, and here you'll see the ability to define those choices. Um, and if we wanted to add to those, we could do that here. Um, and then we've got an input text box, if you will, for a place to put notes or comments. And the last thing we need to do is we need to add a button to this particular adaptive card. So in that case, I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna choose an action set. So we're gonna drag that right underneath. And then in that action set, uh, we need to add a uh, button. So we're gonna add an action to that and we're gonna choose a submit button. And then on that submit button, we're simply gonna set the text to complete. All right, and there you have it. Now we have that adaptive card completed. So let's take a look at the next step, which is plugging this into your actual flow.
All right, so to plug this into the flow, uh, we're gonna come and find our post adaptive card and wait for a response. In this case, we're actually soliciting a response from the user. Um, and we're gonna plug that into this message field here. So you can simply take that JSON that was created in the adaptive cards designer uh, and paste that here. Now, the one thing that you'll need to do after you've done that is you'll need to actually plug in your actual data to this. So we're gonna set this to our assigned to display name from our update item. But then for our fact set, we're gonna go through each one of these values and specify this. These should be able to come right from the create an item trigger. Uh, so we'll go look for title and category. In this case, remember there's a value and a category. So one of those is gonna be the visual, the display of the value. The other one's gonna be an integer. Uh, so we want the display. Department, same thing. Priority. Status created by and when it was created finally. We can use either one of those. All right, and then the last piece of data we want to plug in is the actual uh, description or details. So plug that in. And then down here we have our choice set. Um, resolution and then our complete button. So the last thing I wanna show you in the flow, um, we'll go ahead and save this. The last thing that I wanna show you in this flow is how you actually deal with the input that comes from the adaptive card. Um, and this is a little bit tricky. Uh, so in this particular case, we're gonna take that input and we're gonna apply it to um, basically making a change. We're gonna set the resolution on the item and update any notes that we have. Um, and it would be really nice if this resolution was like dynamic. Um, but it's not always. Um, so one of the things that you'll notice here, uh, let's go ahead and get rid of this so you can take a look at what that looks like. You'll notice that the resolution, that thing doesn't show up even though we named it that in the adaptive card. So this is one of the shortcomings, at least right now in Power Automate, um, is you'll need to actually plug in a value that looks like this, which we note this in the blog post. So basically you're referencing that post adaptive card action, and then you're getting body data and then the name of the actual input field. So in this case, resolution uh, was what we named it. But if you paste that into this slot, it actually figures out what it actually is. So a bit of a workaround, but it's, it, it does work. All right, so that does it for that example. Um, and one of the things I would just remind you of is that these are called adaptive cards for a reason. So um, as I mentioned earlier in the video, these things can be used in a variety of frameworks or platforms. Um, they are declarative in nature, so the intent is that that platform understands how to interpret that declared form or card. Um, and so it can be used in a multitude of ways, all dealing with the same data, which is really nice. And just like the few examples I mentioned early in, earlier in the video, if you have some interesting examples or scenarios where you've used adaptive cards, post a comment. Uh, for this video. We'd love to hear about those things. I'm always interested in hearing what people are using this technology for. Um, there is no end to what you can do with it. Okay, and that's all I've got for this video. Thanks everybody for showing up and we look forward to seeing you next time.